Right, this is slightly off topic, but every time I see your name, I now think of girl, girl love. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. It's like one of the most lesbian names you could have given yourself. <laughs> Great. One, you know, I. Uh, don't. I I I also search up snakehead fish naturalized. The first thing I get is uh the article I was kind of looking through that was looking at specifically Minnesota. The next thing I see is what looks to just be uh Vir the the Virginia government's uh talking about northern snakeheads. And the next one is just uh a uh, a link with the the title of simply the question do snakehead fish travel over land what no no they actually no. do they oh, oh, that's they are inherently invasive because they uh can uh get themselves out of land and wriggle across and like be out of like oh how many i want to say they can survive out of water for was it maybe maybe two or three days? I could be wrong there, but they can survive out of water for a decently long time, and they can use that to just get get you know just get their way over to a different body of water. They're they're really Next hard to, to deal with because of that. Oh, so hello, I'm back. Hello. We definitely at no point mocked you because of boar. You do that every single day. I don't know what oh, you're yeah. talking about. Pikachu, did you ever look in uh, dumb posts where we found out Twitter thought that if there was a family, I think it said, uh, you are Bright's kid? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I saw and apparently, yeah. apparently my Twitter crush is, um, Miss Peep, if any of you are familiar with her. No uh, idea. Oh, and by the way, you're going to want to, like, huh. once want you're done with that stuff, you're going to want to immediately disallow those things from your account. Oh, I already did. Okay, yeah, because uh, we started noticing that uh, they, uh, started to make us uh um follow some nft accounts yeah oh yeah i forgot to un unfollow it oh oh gosh i needed place. to unfollow that well you no, you had to to do the like the family tree thing and the uh twitter crush thing you had to allow this this website access to your account i still question how many people took internet safety 101 when they were five wait i didn't you say you did it i never said my rules apply to me <laughs> but yeah if if you will notice uh in the family tree it was made clear that bright's a cheating bitch Oh yeah, There's because just... in one family uh, tree, Bright was the gr the parents uh, with yeah. uh, my friend Aki, and in the other one, they were parents with Penguin. Because apparently, no, Twitter not... was very bad at no, finding not... agents. No, not no, not no, not Penguin. What it is is, uh, Bright Bright's oh, yeah, parents. You you. Bright's parents are Penguin and Kieran. And then, uh, I am bright spouse, yeah. but then over here at Jerry's thing, uh, bright is Jerry's parent as well as the other person, and then Jerry is your spouse. So, oh, oh, yeah, wait, wait, and that also <laughs> because you are. You and Aderna are brights and my kids. You are in an incestuous relationship with Jerry. And then one of your two's kids is Wolf the Red. 
How is it that? Um. How is it that a snake gives birth to a mouse and a dragon? How does that work? Don't worry about. Oh, it. Aki's. No, not no, 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 it's a chicken. No, 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 it's it's a bird who gives. Yeah, Bright gave, gave birth. birth to a bird and a we dragon. We don't know which of the ladies gave birth. But oh, Aki a mouse is and not a, a snake. Aki is a. Uh, they're let's just say uh, their author name is Raven Karasu, so they'd be a bird if anything. Why are so many of y'all birds? Why do so many of y'all need? I think there's birch only two fly? birds: my friend and Bright. Nobody yeah. tell them that I'm able to fly. That's a I mean, secret. I mean, I'm canonically a bird. You are. Oh, God, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna I thought die. you were a hatchet head. Well, I'm a hat. What What about my name being Hatchet Head excludes me from being a bird? <laughs> that's That's actually fair. <laughs> so, in you're, other you're words, just two, with, with a hatchet in the head. So, in other words, uh, two birds got together, and then a mouse and an elf dragon. What's the result? <laughs> and then, and then a mouse and a snake of all things got together, and well, a, a bearded okay. heathen no, dad. No, was a mouse. The result. Uh, no, th three three birds got together because remember, Bright cheated on you. Oh yeah, did I Ra Raven <laughs> curse? I can't remember. Did I ever tell you that my character does actually have a biological child? With a dragon. What? I don't think yep. so. You've told me. I my, don't remember. My, my character has a boyfriend who is a dragon. And they have a child. <laughs> Zanju, wouldn't be the weirdest fanfic I've read. <laughs> but bookworm is in chat. You had internet safety when you were five. Yeah, don't click on suspicious links. Those pop-up ads telling you you've won something aren't real. On viruses, viruses, viruses. Meanwhile, when I was a tiny child, that was before there was internet safety tips. That was. Let's just say the internet was a lot less safe for children back then. As opposed to now, where it's... Yes, as opposed to now. It is more safe, believe it or not. Hmm. Let's not go into that. Let's because now that there's actual... Of... Yeah. Now there's actual... Out. Now there's actual safety infrastructure designed to help kids stay safe on the internet yeah well, back when then, this started rather than that, there were designs to help people communicate without thinking what if a pedophile goes into this area and starts talking to kids and then they realized it years later like oh shit pedophiles are going in there and talking to kids oh god Should why is why is bright's viewer count going up the second you said that Oh dear God! Should probably, oh! should probably, uh, should probably say predator though. Oh, you're also, right. You're right. Also, bookworm. Um, Chu's boyfriend is an actual dragon, but he he's he's an anthro dragon. But are you wait? Are you saying that a Pokemon dragon? Isn't an actual dragon. Go sit in the corner right now. Because by that logic, you're not an actual mouse. Well, I'm not the one who made the distinction. Bookworm is. Well, I yeah, can, but you, I just no, said and then a you dragon, and and then you <laughs> went along with the distinction. You didn't clear. You didn't correct the the distinction. Anyways, are we ready for the next SCP? Oh. I don't I don't know. What other tangent can we get to? No. 
Let's let's continue on SCPs. I'm sorry. Yeah. Anyway, next SCP. SCP-1623, also known as Night Marches. SCP-1623 is a designation for anomalous phenomena taking place in the region of Frulili Venzia Italy. It. You can. Hey. Yeah. Hey, Bray. Right? If you need yes. help with it, send us the like, uh, the pronunciation. It's fine. Well, the spelling. Yeah. Re referred by the local inhabitants as night marches. SCP sixteen twenty three dash one is a portion of the inhabitants of the night marches region. That refers to each other as Banan Dante. Instances of SCB 1623 1 differ from the rest of the inhabitants by old worn clothing, many times including linen and tie dye aspects, with their appearance generally described as neglected. At approximately 2100 hours, uh, on the four days, with the highest measure of temperatures of every year, this is of SCP-1623-1, lose consciousness and participate in a Diana event. SCP-1623-2 is a portion of the inhabitants of the Night Marches region that SCP-1623 instances referred to as the Witchman Maladanti. Instances of SCP-1623-2 differ from the other inhabitants in SCP-1623-1 instances by dirty, dark clothing, often including jewelry made from wood, copper, and silver. Many SCP-1623-2 instances have been spotted as beggars or street thieves. SCP-1623-3 is a designation for a series of fields and plains and the Undyne and Cordenon provinces at which Diana events take place. The choice of the field used for each event has proven to be random with no discernible pattern discovered so far. A Diana event is a designation for a are a skirmish that takes place during the nights of the four days of the year, with the highest measure of temperatures between projected instances of SCP-1623-1 and SCP-1623-2. These projections bear similarities to the instances themselves, although their exterior appearances vary and have frequent and impractical, impractical modifications. Mm -hmm. These include changes in clothing, color pa patterns, or lights on the clothing and skin. Suits representing various animals or becoming animals themselves. Makeshift weapons. Use unusable for real combat. Stalks of fennel and sugar hum and flags showing the stalks. The projections are intelligible to, to the touch and appear to be able to interact only with each other. The skirmishes you usually proceed in a disorganized manner. SCP-1623-1 projections fight the SCP-1623-2 projections until they are about to expire, but instead the projections in question disappear and their respective instances wake up from their unconscious state shortly after. These skirmishes always continue until one side has no surviving projections. The highest recorded number of projections on either side reach redacted on redacted. However, more than redacted projections on either of the dash 2 or dash 1 instances have never remained on site after the skirmish. During this time, all meaning remaining projections undergo a redacted before disappearing from SCP-1623-3 
In the following weeks, the region of night marches experiences an improvement in agricultural production and higher birth rate, or an agricultural drop and an increase of miscarriages and stillbirths. Because of the personnel modifications and as per revised containment procedures, the projections have proven very hard to identify with their respective Dash 1 and Dash 2 instances. Aerial re reconnaissance is under consideration as a method to identify possible Dash 1 hmm. and Dash 2 instances participating in a Diana event. Alright, there you go. I don't really know what to think of that. Yeah, I honestly, I like, like, is there like, is there any actual danger here? Uh, except for the fact that dash one and dash two instances actually try and kill each other. I think the only danger that's posed are to the people who live there. They're not going anywhere. Yeah, and in and in which case it's just a certain groups classification. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be very at work going. I mean, I could see it getting dangerous for the people who live there, but nobody else. No offense yeah, to them, but that won't destroy the whole world. Yeah, and more so, like, this is again one of those things where, like, I question why it's a Keter. Because, like, if this is just a thing that only happens to this town and it never leaves this town, like, uh, I can see why they would do that because there are some things that don't leave a town that that are totally insane. Well, yeah, but again, Keter classification is based upon how hard it is to contain. Oh, that's true. <laughs> like, well, this. so Hatch, I would say, like in this case, it could they could have classified it as Keter due to. Um, like, due to its potential, due to them not knowing if it would, like, in the future, leave the town. Yeah, but generally speaking, when they do that, it's because, like, there's a precedent for it happening. Yeah. Like, there's something that would lead them to speculate that that is possible. Like, ultimately, if we just go into every every scp and assume the absolute worst possible thing conceivable will happen then every single scp would be a keter yeah i will admit that's true after all the difference between the one i was thinking about and this one is there's probably some uh, danger of the crooked man eventually getting out of that town and when people are struck by it, it doesn't just lower births, it kills people. Yeah, like, in that, like, specifically for that case, that instant, like, the crooked man itself is the anomaly. But in this case, it's pretty much the entire town is the anomaly. So basically, all you have to do is contain the town, which, uh, of all the things the SCP Foundation can do, that's actually, like, fucking trivial that's a fair point so yeah i would say just certain groups and uh, as seems to happen a lot i question why this is a cure <laughs> I mean, Chu does not want to respond to my question. What What'd was the question? <laughs> I, oh yeah, he's a dragon. So like feasibly, like you're small and. Oh my god! My question <laughs> was: Does your boyfriend like war Chu? Oh. Anyway, time for the next SCP.
SCP-1625, also known as Tradition. Do you have to say it like that? Because <laughs> I, because I do. Anyway. Also known as Tradition. <laughs> All right. SCP-1625 is an oral tradition within the Amaski tribe of Kenya. The said tradition consists of a mythic story explaining the history of the tribe's ethnarch known as Redacted, and the creation of the Amaski people. The anomalous features of SCP-1625 are only apparent when an in individual attempts to recount it. All individuals who attempt to pass on SCP-1625 will provide a different ending for the story. There have been no documented repeat endings, those which appear more than once from different individuals. SCP-1625 follows a consistent structure for all Italian is beginning with redacted being held in uh oh. What what what? Alright, uh Twitch, do not get mad at me. Beginning with redacted being held in slavery in the north, followed by his escape, his founding of the Amoski tribe, and the liberation of the Amoski people from slavery. The standard story oh. ends after this point, which each speaker providing their own ending. The secondary trait of SCP-1625 is the genetic transfer. SCP-1625 is inherently known by any individual who is at least 10% descended from an MSV member, even if they have received no previous knowledge of SCP-1625. Attempts at using amnestics have met with failure as afflicted subjects will remember the legend after several days. For this reason, all genetic, genetic masking members are to be secured at Site 37. Uh, SCP 1625 1 is a corpse identified as that of an African male and understood to be that of Redacted. Patriarch of the Amaska tribe. A new instance of SV 1625 1 will appear after any attempt to pass on the protected legend. The body will continually appear at site 1625, though the specific location varies. The condition of the body, as well as any objects surrounding it or inscriptions in the area, Varies and will change time. SCP-625 is passed on. The location will often change with SCP-1625-1, with the body being located in several cases: in either a large mausoleum, a common grave, or buried several feet underground in a nondescript location. Following the events of Incident 1625-1, personnel are to treat SCP-1625-1 instances with extreme caution until the specimen can be safely secured. It is unknown as if writing how SCP-1625-1 is continually transferred to Site-1625, the research at Site-37 is ongoing. Uh, incident 1625-1 On November 5th, 1993 During routine tests involving SCP-1625 An ethnic Amaski member created what is now document 1625-8-A-3 a, a transcript of SCP-1625 The ending is said document stated that there was a plague which afflicted the Amaski tribe that eventually killed over redacted people before being stopped via quarantine. Following standard procedure, the research team at Site 1625 searched for and located 
SCP-1625-1 in a previously undisclosed tomb. The tomb was sealed off and placed underground. And was seemingly carved out of the surrounding rock. Inscriptions along the walls describe the disease with symptoms similar to those of the bubonic plague. Though several qualities are similar to redacted. The inscriptions also gave multiple warnings addressing the body of redacted. SC 1625-1 itself was found several dozen feet from the ground with redacted other corpses and returned to the service for testing. Seven other corpses were also moved from ground for additional testing. After four days, the head researcher at Site 1625, Dr. Betros, requested additional medical supplies due to staff illness. Supplies were sent from nearby Site 91 and supported by MTF Beta 9, aka Dead Reckoning. Upon revival, arrival, Beta 9 discovered the members of the research staff were infected with disease can detailed in the document 1625-A-3 and site 1625 was deemed a quarantine area. Members of 6 NTF Beta 9 carried out a procedure 13 Romeo and new staff members were brought in, in to replace the previous researchers. On November 15th 1993. The current procedures were approved for Site 1625 and, and for the Maskey tribe. The tribe, along with 12 descendants, was moved to Site 37 on April 17th, 1994. And there you go. I feel like if this wasn't happening in the SCP universe, I would have to say this is how humanity ends. So, just to try to recap things from my brain. What's going on here is we've got a indigenous tribe who have an oral tradition in which every time someone from their tribe or genealogy says this tradition or says this story, they end up saying it in a different way, and then that ends up the the different retellings end up altering the state of this original tribe member which could then feasibly cause harm as a result of say the story ending with a plague and then there's a plague that's a result of it yeah i have no idea how to classify it yeah. Well, it was probably originally a story that ended with a plague because there was probably a horrible plague at one point, but they had to figure out a way to get rid of it. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so like, are you saying that the de anomalous aspects of this are basically the tribe trying to stop the plague? I think the plague is less uh... One moment, let me turn my alarm off. There we go. I think the plague uh, is less uh the anomaly and more like a possible result from the anomaly the anomaly is even when they're not told the story they remember they know it well yeah no what what i what i was meaning is that like are we presuming that like this anomaly of them 
telling the story like this exists to keep the plague from coming back? I think it exists to keep their culture alive, considering how many people would have likely died in that plague. Yeah. I guess I'm just getting confused. Either way, I have no fucking idea where we would put this. Same. Well, so long as it's so long as it's well contained, I then mean, I would have to say it's not a danger. But it, it only takes one person to say the wrong version of the story to possibly bring another bubonic plague upon Earth. So. Yeah. Uh, oh. If that happens, it goes from uh, non-dangerous to super dangerous, super quick. Mm. Yeah, and like, now, like, what's Zanju saying in the uh, chat? This kind of, I just realized, this kind of feels like another one that we already looked at that I think we put into ZK. Because it was like, like a genetic quirk where anyone with this specific gene, there was a chance of when they dreamed something, that dream would come to pass. And if one of those people had a dream of, well, universe is ending, there would be a chance of the universe literally ending. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember so, that. So does this fall into that category, is my question. Because if that's the case, it could very feasibly reasonably be made XK or ZK. I think you're right. It would be made that class. Yeah. Which I remember, I remember that one specifically because, like, I think the true horror in, uh, I think the true horror in that case comes primarily from the fact that, uh, if that sort of genetic quirk existed, that would actually be the first example of a justified genocide. Yeah. Because, literally, it's for the good of all of humanity to get that gene out of the gene pool. Which, that doesn't... It, hatchet doesn't mean it's what... Yeah, what Twitch, this is... About. This is fictional. Um, we're talking about fictional people and fictional abilities and fictional things that don't happen. I mean, I would hope that Twitch doesn't think that a plague could exist by telling a story a certain way, but... Well, they also think that uh, um, salted dried bread is a slur, so... What? Oh. So, yeah, that's old news. It's sad that's what counts as news. Yeah. <laughs> Zanju, the true horror was the friends we made along the way. Oh my god. I guess I, I would probably put this in XK rather than ZK, because I would imagine that there is um less of a uh, uh there, less of a like reality thing, more of like a earth yeah. chattering thing. Yeah. Like, it, it seems significantly less likely for a version of this story to come out where someone is like, and then at the end, the reality collapsed in on its Like, that seems less likely with the case of an oral tradition as it does with, like, someone literally having a dream that causes that to happen. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, this reminds me of the orcs from Warhammer 4K universe. 
Their tech works literally because they believe it works. They paint their bullets red because red makes bullets go faster, and as a result, their bullets go faster. They what is paint stuff? What is flames on their ships for the same reason, and it actually makes them go faster. Huh. What is this? The fucking slingshot from it? With the silver bullets? Where they only work when you believe they work? Mm-hmm. Mm. Who got Stephen King in here? Yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna do one more SCP, and then I'll be it. I ain't no, feeling not, get, getting getting tired. Turn. Yeah, slightly tired. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. So let's see what the nickname of the final SCP for the night is. I swear, if it's something funny like Nibbles. Oh, dude, I hope it's something. We need another Nibbles. We just uh, talked about a thing that like could like could potentially justify mm -hmm. genesis. We need we need something happy like nibbles. I I, oh, I oh, see the I see the thing that's uh before the one we're about to read, but the one we're reading is La Vie and Rose. Yeah, but anyway, the SCP that's before it is the human food pyramid. Oh, that's no, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> that sound that, actually no, I'm not gonna say what that sounds like. Well, before we do, Chew. before we do it, I want to look and see what the human food pyramid is. No. Chew would prefer book, if it was the book, Chew food pyramid. Book Funk Chew for. That one doesn't even make sense. Bonk. Chew gets double bonked. I will still say, I love the fact that, like, with uh, Bonk, Hatchet, and Bright, it's Bonk, Bright, Bonk, Hatchet, but there's just the added to Chew, so it's Bonk, the Chew. <laughs> It's just a bunch of people who will stack together on a pyramid for food. Nice. Based. But, like, based what does that even mean? They'll do whatever know. they can to get food. And almost humanoid beings. And one of the things they'll do is stack in a pyramid. Okay, let's just read the one that we're actually supposed to be reading. Oh. Oh, oh, this one's been updated recently. So it has the disruption class and risk class. Mm. All right. SCP-1631, disruption class, dark. Risk class, notice. SCP-1631 is a phenomenon that causes crystalline flower-like growths to appear on certain grave markers in the country of Denmark. SCP-1631-1 instances have a composition identical to their substrate being composed of granite, marble, or other materials commonly used in tombstones, despite their abnormal coloration. In all observed cases, SCP-1631-1 instances have been shown to only affect grave markers of children, primarily those ranging from infancy to approximately 15 years old. Oh! Discovery. SCP-1631 was first discovered in 1989 after a family relative reported the cherub marker of their nephew, Runar Helgeson, as, as having been vandalized after several odd structures attached to it. Due to the context of the apparent crime, it received nationwide attention, necessi necessitating the usage of Foundation Contin Contingencies th 3B6, aka scapegoating, when the structures were examined more closely and their anomalous nature was confirmed. 
Since the discovery of the subsequent classification, SCP-1631 appears to be declining over time, theorized to be in response to a long-term downward trend of infant mortality. The instigating force behind the anomalous phenomenon remains unknown. Wait, so this is just... Oh, wait. Wait. What? Wait. At first, I thought it was, but but hold on. Description upgrade. SCP-1631-2 is a humanoid entity resembling a young woman, believed to be responsible for a generation of SCP-1631-1 instances. The mechanism at which it generates instances, as well as its specific motives regarding the instances, remain unknown. All MTFPI-3 members are to remain alert to any woman matching SCP-1631-2's description located within a one-mile radiance of any SCP-1631 event. It's just marble flowers that just destroy child gravestones. Does it destroy them or just show up on them? Well, it said it was vandalized, so I don't think it looks nice or... I think what what it's doing is it's poking out of the gravestone. Yeah. Because, like, the picture it's showing, it looks like it's coming out of it. Yeah. Like, hold on, I can... Oh, I, I got this. Uh, let me just go to Discord. Let me go to stream planning so everyone in here and I understand. No, I did not want to send it twice. What the f... <laughs> there you go. It's very pretty. Until you remember it's destroying child graves. Yeah. <laughs> Which is really fucked. It's like, I will put these flowers on these graves. But it, it is unknown as to why it's doing this. Well, I mean, it's... I guess that's the thing. I, I, I guess I'm not seeing how this would be called destroying the graves. Oh, wait. It's just, it's just little, it's pretty little colorful crystal flowers that show up. And just like cover the graves. Yeah. Basically. Uh, yeah, but, uh. Like if it, if it completely covers the graves, then no, that's. Oh, I see how that would be destroying the graves. Think about it. If crystals start crystallizing on the stone, it will technically start destroying the grave marker itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, if, if it's just, like, these little bulbs, I don't see how it's just, like, all that destructive, but if it, like, can, like, if it's a really persistent growth of the crystals, then I could see how it's damaging. I think it's a growth that comes from inside the stone, because if you notice, it looks like those tiny little bumps are just the starts of the crystal. That would eventually destroy the grave marker if it wasn't uh, removed, if you can even remove it. Yeah, well, yeah, but we also don't know that those would necessarily butt out like that. They might just not do that. Mm. Like, basically, if the... Why did I think Hatchet and Jerry said... Chew! Anyway, um, we don't really have to classify this as a Keter. Oh, th did it get changed from a Keter? Addendum 13-10-2020. At the time of its original discovery and classification, SCP-1631 had an estimated occurrence rate of approximately every three or four weeks. SCP-1631 events appeared to be growing less frequent over time, with the inactivity period in between events lengthening to approximately 1.5 to 2 months. If the current rate of decline persists, SCB-1631 will functionally cease It should be reclassified as neutralized by late December of next year. Further containment procedures have been deemed unnecessary. Okay, so it's neutralized. 
Yeah, I was gonna say, like, even if it wasn't there, like, even if it wasn't neutralized, like, this would this would have to go into one of the non-harmful tiers. Okay, I'm just gonna send another picture of another addendum that was way further, that was further up. And apparently it was like a, a talk about one of the parents and whatnot who witnessed mm -hmm. this. Uh, well, let's see. Since I do it. Oh. Why is... Yep. Why is this particularly notable? Eh, I mean, I didn't expect it them to actually s s directly say how the children died. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> Bookworm adds, also in the conversation stuff, SCP-1631-2 says, everyone deserves flowers, don't you think? So I think they're pretty harmless, at least in intention. Okay. Well, yeah, harmless in intention, just not practice. Well, yeah, but, like, what that also implies is that they wouldn't destroy the grave. On if purpose. that entity... Well, if that entity has control over the buds then they wouldn't have them grow to the extent of actually destroying the grave. Well, the, well, here's the thing. Uh, with this, uh, actually could be right, could be wrong at the same time. We, don't, we really don't know if the flowers keep growing. It does not say. Uh, it just says I, it appears. That's it. I would hedge my bets on it doesn't grow considering... Or that they doesn't continue growing, considering the fact that the entity that is causing them to grow doesn't actually want to cause any harm. Why They're literally just... Huh? Why is this a Keter? Uh, it, it's ironic, because this time when you start questioning why it's a Keter, I can completely understand why it's a Keter. If it's, like, happening, like randomly like it like when this started it was just happening consistently all over norway there's no way to contain that wait i thought it, it says denmark denmark yeah sorry <laughs> i mixed up my nordic <laughs> countries yeah, <laughs> yeah it, like it was happening all over denmark there's no way aren't to... You supposed to be are you supposed to be the pagan <laughs> i'm pagan I'm also no, I mean the like, I mean the per the yeah, well like the practicing pay the like uh religious pagan. Norse. Norse I, I'm pagan. just saying there's like multiple pagans in this server. It's just there's different types of pagans. You don't need to be uh of the Norse faith of any type to be a spit well, to be like pagan. I I, I think it's journey was like specifically. So we already yeah, know I it's uh, reassigned, or because it's going to be reassigned anyways. Yeah, I uh, um, I think Aderna was just uh speaking toward uh because I'm a Norse heathen, and yeah. ultimately speaking, my practice does not much hinge on a geographical understanding of where these gods were originally worshipped. Uh. I forgot what the next SCP. I was just making a joke. So. Yeah, yeah, I know. I I forgot what the next SCP's picture was, so I went to see what its number was so I can save it. You know, so I can automatically start reading tomorrow night. Yeah. And. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ha 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 
<laughs> is this a joke, SCP? Uh, no. It's not a slash J? No. Oh my god. <laughs> what the? What, what's he doing there? Let's see. Its nickname is Log of Extra Scholastic Events. <laughs> doesn't make it. That doesn't help at all. Wait. I have a feeling it's actually pretty dangerous. Wait. Wait. This. This SCP has gone through four reclassifications. Holy shit! What? Extra normal. Reclassified to Keter. Reclassified to neutralize. Reclassified to Keter. Bruh. It's gone through four reclassifications. What the fuck is it? I guess that's a good hook to get people to show up tomorrow, goddammit. Yeah. You want to find out what's up with this man wearing all black with a traffic cone on his head leaning up against a wall that has gone through four? Four different reclassifications. Uh, t tune in next time to find out what the fuck is going on here. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm interested to read this. Oh, but we'll wait till next time. You must bait viewers for tomorrow. <laughs> I don't think she's very good at baiting. But that thing is.